All right, this is AP, AB, and BC calculus. We are doing unit four, section one, which is interpreting the meaning of the derivative in context. So we're gonna dive right into uh, some explanation and then some examples. So the derivative of a function represents the instantaneous rate of change of a function with respect to the independent variable, which is very frequently time, but not always. So uh, when evaluated at a specific value of the independent variable, we get the instantaneous rate of change in that moment. So for instance, if f prime of x is the instantaneous rate of change of the function f of x at any moment, f prime of 5 is the instantaneous rate of change of f of x at 5, right, when x is 5. So the units of the derivative, which is essentially just change in y over change in x, are the units of the function over the units of the independent variable. For instance, if h of t is height in meters and t is time in seconds, then h prime of t would be measured in meters, which is the way that we measure h over seconds, so meters per second. Um, so we're going to walk through a bunch of examples just sort of giving context to how you would use the derivative in a word problem uh, because, you know, that's sort of the whole thing we do in this class. All right, so example one, let C of T be the amount of coffee in my cup. Hint, it is not enough uh, in ounces. So let T be, the, uh, be time in seconds since I started drinking said cup of coffee. So C of T is a 12 E to the negative 0.25 T. Uh, so we're asked to find C prime of zero and explain its meaning with appropriate units, C prime of eight and explain its meaning. Uh, and also to look at those two values from A and B and compare and talk about why they make sense in the context of me drinking my cup of coffee. So you can actually make your calculator find a derivative at zero and eight, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and just at least walk through what C prime would be uh, by hand. So, so C prime of T would be, uh, the 12 just sits in front. I differentiate the e to the stuff and get e to the stuff times the derivative of the stuff. So 12 e to the stuff times the derivative of the stuff, right? So what's going to happen is I'm going to get that this is a 3 uh, with a negative, right? Because this is 12 times a negative 1 fourth e to the negative 0.25t. That's my derivative c prime of t. So in a, c prime of 0, right? should be a negative 3 e to the 0, or just a negative 3, right? And that's going to be ounces per second, right? So what does that mean? Well, that means that at, at the start of my cup of coffee, right, at, as I start, uh, I start drinking at a rate of about 3 ounces per second, right? I am drinking 3 ounces per second uh, so when I start drinking, so at the start of the problem, my first sip, right, if you want to think about it that way, right, my very first sip, I am drinking three ounces per second, right, uh, because this is the rate of change of the amount of coffee in my cup. It makes sense that it's negative because I'm drinking the coffee out of my cup, right, so I am fully chugging my coffee first thing in the morning. Uh, eight seconds in, so C prime of eight would be a negative three E to the negative two, right, which is like negative 3 over uh, e squared, right, ounces per second, right. Now, that's somewhere in the neighborhood, so you should never actually write that e is 3 because e is not 3, right, um, but you could type it in your calculator to find an approximation, right, but what's worth noting is that's kind of like a one-third, like a 3 over a 9-ish, right, so in your brain, right, in your brain only, you don't write this down for other people, although I'm writing it down here for you now, e is kind of 3-ish, Pi is also kind of three-ish, right? So if you're ever using, if you're ever trying to estimate in your brain, you can say, oh, hey, that's about a third of an ounce, right? So, so that's my answer, right? But, um, but this is how fast I'm drinking. So, so after eight seconds, I'm drinking uh, about three over e squared ounces per second. And, and that would be one where it might be worth making it a decimal, right? As I said, it's close to a third. So if you did three, uh, sorry, my bad, divided by in parentheses e squared, it's gonna be in the neighborhood of a third, right? So it's a little bit more than a third because e is a little bit smaller than three. So, but if you were estimating, it's not gonna be horrible to uh, to estimate it as in your brain, not on paper as a third, if you're trying to figure it out. So, so I'm drinking a little bit less than half of an ounce, a little bit more than a third. So um, why does that make sense? Well, um, it's harder to drink as fast when there's less coffee in my cup, 
times, right? So, so um, over over that time, right, from from t is zero to t equals eight, um, there's less coffee in my cup. It's harder to chug, right? So it's harder to like gulp down my coffee. Right, there's less in there. I'm taking. I'm, I'm at the point where I'm trying to conserve what coffee I have left as the cup gets closer and closer to empty, uh, and so I'm drinking uh, more slowly at that point. All right. Okay, so for P1, people are getting in line outside the Aldi waiting for it to open. Uh, it's a pandemic, so they're all masked and six feet apart. The first person, uh, we'll call him Bob. Bob gets in line at the uh, a full hour before the store opens. Uh, he really wants to get some groceries, that Bob. So L of T represents the length of the line in people in the first hour before the store opens. So at time T uh, in minutes is measured since Bob, the first person, got in line, meaning that L of zero, if you plug in a zero into the length of the line, would be one because it's Bob. Bob is in the line at, at one. So we're asked to find L prime of 10 and explain its meaning with appropriate units, L prime of 50 and explain, explain its meaning with appropriate units, and then compare the two in the context of this problem. Okay, so remember, we're just going to call the first guy that got in line Bob. So I can use my calculator to find L prime of 10 and L prime of 50, but we're going to go ahead and find L prime of T by hand just because here it's not awful. So I'm going to get a 0.19. Uh, sorry, 18t plus 0 0.01. So when I'm asked to do A, L prime of 0, sorry, 10, my brain, is going to be a 1.8 plus 0 0.01, right, which is going to be a 1.81 uh, people per minute, okay? So when I'm asked to explain what A means in words, right, and actually let's just squeeze in B real quick too. We'll find what L prime of 50 would be, right? Uh, that's going to end up being a 9.0 plus 1.01, uh, which is going to end up being a 9.01 people per minute. Okay, so now let's explain A and B uh, with appropriate units. So A, after 10 minutes, at T equals 10 minutes, uh, people are joining the line at a rate of... 1.81 people per minute. So a little bit fewer than two people per minute are walking up at minute 10, right? So I realize you can't technically have 1.81 people, but that's how rates work. It means that it's somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, one to two, right? Inching its way towards two. At T equals 50 minutes, so this is 50 minutes after Bob started the line, people are joining at a rate of 9.01 people per minute. So the car is parked and people are, all these cars are parking and people are walking up to the store. So why does this make sense? Well, more people are likely to show up when the store is about to open, right? Um, closer to opening, right? So closer to opening time, more people show up. Right, so that's, that's basically the logic. Uh, so, so basically that's why the rate is higher because more people are pulling into the parking lot. If the store opens at 10 a.m. or whatever it is, more people are going to show up at 9.50 than are going to show up at 9. Only Bob was like, oh, yo, I'm here an hour early, right? So that's the logic. That's why the rate is higher. Notice that these are not the same as saying how many people are in the line, right? If I asked you how many people were in the line at 10 seconds, that would be L of T. So notice the difference. L prime of T is the rate at which people are joining the line. L of t is how many people are in line. So if I asked you for L of 10, right, L of 10 would have been a 9 because it would be a 0 0.09 times 100. So 9 uh, plus 0.1 plus 1. So, so for example, just to show you L of 10, right, so, so separate, not this question, but just to show you, right, and I'm going to write this on top of here, L of 10 would have been a, what did I say, that was 9, 10, so a 10.1 people in line. So, so at the moment when this rate was happening, there were already 10 people standing in line. So those 10 people were watching this other 1.8-ish people, which we realize in the real world is closer to 2, show up and join the line, right? If I asked you what T of 50 is, and I'm not going to do that one right here, but or, sorry, what L of 50 is, you could find how long the line was 50 minutes in. You could find it by finding L of 50, if you found L of 50, I lied, I can't do it, it's fine. Let's see, that's a 9 times a 25 
225. Yikes, this is a long line. So it's like 226 people in line. Like Ella 50 is a lot of people. So there's a ton of people like lined up around the block and they're watching these extra nine people per minute walk up to join, okay? Uh, so that's kind of the logic of it, all right? Uh, so again, L of 10 would be how many people are in the line. L prime of 10 is the rate at which people are joining the line when T is 10. You do need to include the time in your explanation. You can't just say it's people joining the line at a rate of whatever. You have to include that it's at 10 seconds. All right, cool. Uh, so Fletch is dumping his Cheerios, seemingly infinite Cheerios, on the floor into a pile. The volume of the pile... Uh, is given by V of T at time T measured in seconds since he started pouring. Explain in words what V prime of 5 equals 13 tells us. Okay, so remember, V of T is the uh, the number, like it's the volume of the Cheerio pile measured in Cheerios. Like there's 10 Cheerios in the pile, there's 30 Cheerios in the pile, there's 5 Cheerios in the pile, whatever it is. V prime is the rate of change of the Cheerios, right? So V prime of 5 equals 13. Well, it's going to be measured in Cheerios because that's how we were measuring volume, right? That's volume over seconds because that's how we're measuring the time, right? So it's in 13 Cheerios per second. And what this is saying is at 5 seconds, so at T equals 5 seconds, Fletch is pouring his Cheerios at a rate of... 13 Cheerios per second. So what's actually coming out of his cup at five seconds is 13 Cheerios per second. That's the rate at which he's pouring, okay? Um, all right. Uh, so Fletch, uh, so and uh, pouring da -da 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 on the floor into a pile. So the, the volume of the pile, cool. Bailey found said pile of Cheerios because Fletch has finished pouring them and is now watching The Lion King, naturally. Uh, the volume of the pile in Cheerios at time t is given by b of t. Now, now it's getting eaten, right, because Bailey has found the Cheerios and Bailey will eat the Cheerios. Uh, time t is measured in seconds since Bailey started eating. Explain in words what b prime of 10 equals negative 2 means. Okay, so b prime of 10 is the new volume of the pile in Cheerios, right, uh, changing with respect to time, right? So the volume of the pile is b, the rate at which that's changing is B prime. So what this is saying in words is after uh, 10 seconds of eating, Bailey is eating two Cheerios. So, so we could say even is eating at a rate of two Cheerios per second. Now, why did I take away the negative? Well, because he's eating them at that rate, right? He's eating them. Uh, the pile's getting smaller by two Cheerios per second. The reason it's getting smaller by two Cheerios per second is because Bailey is eating them and they are in his belly, not in the pile. So that's the idea. Um, I do want to go, so you'll notice in, in P1, or sorry, in P2 and E2, there was no, uh, there was no equation for you to differentiate. You were just given the value. If you were given one like E1 or P1, you can make your calculator differentiate this at these two points. And we're going to talk more about that uh, later if I haven't already explained that in a previous video. It's hard to remember sometimes what I've done. But if you want to differentiate in your calculator, right, you wouldn't use t. Uh, so if you wanted to differentiate in your calculator, you would have 12 uh, e to the negative 0.25 t, but you're using x in place of t, right? So there you go. And you can make your calculator differentiate at both these points, right? You can do math, and 8 is n derived. I want to differentiate the thing I called, called y1, so I go to vares over to y vares. What did I do wrong? I didn't hit enter, it thought I did. Uh, so vares over to y vares, pick y1, because that's where I put this, right? With respect to x, which is taking the place of t for me in this problem, um, at 0, and hit enter, and it's going to give me that it's a negative 3.0001. Now, you notice that I got exactly negative 3, and they get an approximation. The reason for that is your calculator doesn't actually differentiate. It does a very high-level approximation. But you'll notice that if we round or truncate to three places, we always get the same answer. So if you went to three places after the decimal, you would also get a negative 3. If I hit second enter, I can go up and change that 0 to an 8. And when I do that, it should give me this answer that we got here. 
and you see that that is that same answer that we got. So you can use your calculator to differentiate at a specific value. Uh, sometimes you're not going to have a calculator on a question like this. This is not an unfair level of question to make you do by hand, uh, but I just want to show you that it is an option to use your calculator to differentiate. And that's it for this video.